Welcome to another episode of Uspaxico, and then today I'm so excited. I got my good friend James Anderson. James, great to have you. Oh, thank you for having me, Matthew. It is a joy to be anywhere near your life and what you're doing. So I love being on this podcast with you. Thanks for the invitation. Thank you. Thank you. So um, we, um, we've known each other for a few years, I think. I'm trying to remember. I think it was 2010. When we when we first met, so for a uh, for a conference, um, uh, and and then since then we've had we've had many interactions over the years, and um, yeah, especially uh, through our involvement, the Crucible Project has probably been a big thing that's brought us together, um, and so I'm I'm sure we can talk some about that, but. Um, yeah, I think one of the one of the fun things that, that we share uh, these days is that we have two kids in the same college. <laughs> That's right. So, That's right. Um, yeah, and and yeah. what's today, Jay? What, what, what's today? Well, today is opening uh, op- opening day of baseball, um, and so the new Major League Baseball season is starting up. But also, uh, Wheaton College Thunder, the baseball team that that my son Caleb plays on uh is is moving into conference play this weekend and so they play north park university and then their rivals too with north central and we just want to beat them so bad i i, I we're hoping for a, a good conference season <laughs> with, cool. with 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 caleb and, and rebecca in in college together we have this uh, competition now, Matthew. Is that what you would call it? Where we yeah, we see? Yeah. C- t- tell us about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I just took a, a selfie while you were talking. <laughs> there you go. Because uh, they're they're there in person together. You and I, we live about two hours apart, um, and and so we don't see each other every you know every maybe a, maybe I don't know, sometimes it's one or two times a month, but sometimes it can go a couple months and we don't see each other in person. But um, they're there on campus, so they took a selfie together. And Rebecca says, "This this is a competition: the kids against the dads." And let's see. And so every time, even if it's on a Zoom call or on something, we send a selfie. I think we're up five to three. I think we're ahead. So anyway, yeah, we're we're gonna we're gonna, go we're gonna, one, gonna... One the bay. <laughs> get, Rebecca go get her selfies with Caleb from the cafeteria and. It, yeah. walking across campus and stuff like that. But you and I will see each other almost every day next week. And so we're going to, yeah. our, our total is going to get, get a little cushion <laughs> in there. Well, let's talk about that. Let's talk about Crucible. I think um, um, for me, for me, first weekend when I was, I was 40. And so now this year I'm celebrating turning 50. So it's, in a decade that that it's been a part of my life um, and very um, very impactful. I remember you you were part of the staff there that first uh, that first weekend where, where I attended and and since then we've uh, Crucible has uh, four uh, weekends that are only available to, to men who who attended the first one right so um, I think th- at least three of those four you and I attended the other and translated them and staff them in Spanish um, here in Mexico. Um, so, so maybe say a little bit more of like what, what Crucible has meant for you, what would you say? Oh, man, Crucible. Crucible just gave, gave me a chance to get below the surface issues of my life and live from a deeper place, I think. I think it showed the road from how to get there with um, – courageous modeling of friends and men who are being real and learning to live from their heart and even learn how to read their heart and live from that, that deep, those deeper places with each other and then mission in the world. And a uh, crucible has been just a game changer in my life. I, I, there's really a before and after in my life from the crucible. And that's right. What's, what's cool about that is that's like right about the time when you and I got to meet each other, I think through some interactions with the red del Camino uh, here in Mexico and uh, our lives kind of lined up right there around 2010. Our, 
our, our families, our, our wives, our ministries started to overlap and you and I get to share in, in, a, in several different contexts that just bring a lot of joy to me. We, we live together as friends from deep places in meaningful mission together in the world. And it's just, it just brought so many gifts and so much grace into my life. It's hard to even know how to describe it all. It's awesome. <laughs> Okay, so you mentioned uh, we, we when we met the first time in 2010, it was it was for a, a conference with a group called uh, La Red del Camino, so the the network right of the way, yeah. and it's just a group yeah. of like minded folks who want to see the kingdom advance and and um, just just want to see justice and see uh, goodness and blessing and um, that kind of thing in Latin America, started by Latin Americans, and so we've mm -hmm. we've been. Uh, loosely connected with it's, it's it's just a very loose organization it feels like but it, there's a, there's just a depth um, and a heart that just is is awesome um, so um, anyway we we've we've connected through through them um, but I, I remember when was it uh, 2019 I believe you were you were starting a, as part of your doctorate work you were starting a cohort uh, a pioneer yeah. cohort. Uh, for for spiritual formation in in Latin America, yeah. so um, Lena and I wanted to get plugged in with that, and it's it's been such an awesome, just blessing to journey with what twenty thirty people, uh, kind of uh, just yeah walking through that. So say more about that. Yeah, that that spiritual formation cohort is such a community of really special friends that care a lot about putting on Christ-like character and mm -hmm. living the gospel with their neighbors and practicing what they're learning. And so, mm -hmm. and so when we get together for whether it's retreat, you know, we, there's some good content, but mostly there's just great conversation and camaraderie, uh, yeah. celebrating each other's lives and cheering each other on and making mm -hmm. sure that we're learning together, but also that we're sharing practices together as we go, you know, we'll usually, share a monthly practice that everybody's doing wherever they're at, that they can live in their daily life. And yeah. oh, that that's just one of the most joyful, intentional spaces in our life. Mm -hmm. And it's such a compliment to the work that's done in Crucible, kind mm -hmm. of just how do we turn our, our lives and minds and bodies and uh, days, how do we turn it all towards God's light? And how is mm -hmm. his light filling our life? It's it's an amazing, beautiful community, that cohort. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. And there's, I guess, it, most most of the folks are, are in Mexico, but but not all necessarily in Mexico City. There's there's uh, people in different parts that, that have kind of crossed our lives, right? And then, and then even from the States, and you've had guests from other places as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. Our home, you know, it serves as a retreat house here. Yeah just in the middle of Mexico city. And it's such a cool opportunity to get to receive people and share hospitality. And just, it, yeah. it's almost like we nos encerramos on a weekend. Like we just get together, mm -hmm. lock ourselves yeah. in here on our patio and yeah. listen to God together and encourage each other as, mm -hmm. as we want to want to grow more like Christ. So just that yeah. those friendships are just amazing. Yeah, I know. I know for for both Lena and I, it's been so so nurturing and so um, so good to, to feel um, a part of this of this group. Um, the last the last five years, it's just been it's just been very rich for us. Um, and even though it's not a it's not a weekly gathering, um, just just to have this body that we're walking with and doing life with. Um, yeah, I guess it's been it'll, it'll it's coming up on five years uh, in June uh, when when the first. Uh, the first retreat was done, and so yeah, um, yeah, I'm, I'm thankful for for that. Um, so you do, um, you also do spiritual direction, um, and I know that that's that's something a lot of people are not f familiar with. So what would what would you say in a few minutes about what what you do? Um, yeah, so just kind of a simple definition of of spiritual direction is uh, one person listening to another. Uh, to track uh, what God is doing in somebody's life and developing a deeper friendship with him. Mm. So it's just paying attention, 
uh, to a friend in mm -hmm. listening presence and hospitality, kind of a place of welcome yeah. and, and helping someone track the themes uh, and activity of God in, in their life. And so mm -hmm. what spiritual direction turns into for the listener, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> for the director is just so much grace because I get to listen to the most intimate parts of people's lives, which is their mm -hmm. prayer and their life with God and what's going on mm -hmm. from the consolations to the desolations to the mm -hmm. deepest longings of their heart and the deepest struggles of their faith. And mm -hmm. um, it, it actually turns into a place of holy ground every time mm -hmm. we stop and listen to God together. So, and actually, I think a lot of people from our spiritual formation cohort are so given to that kind of listening, attentive mm -hmm. life, both in their own life and in friendship, mm -hmm. companioning other people around them, that I'm sure our cohort will turn into a spiritual direction training ground for future yeah. spiritual directors in Latin America. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. That's, that's, it, it is. It's a good I, I, sure. I, if you want me to push it just a little bit farther and deeper, what one of the gifts of spiritual direction is I get a front row seat to the most precious parts of people's lives. Hmm. And, and, and Matthew, the, the more I listen in spiritual direction, the more I get to be close and listening, listening to people's lives and God's loving in their life. Mm -hmm. People are amazing, Matthew. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if we, I think we take for granted how beautiful and amazing and God filled mm -hmm. the God carriers that people are, that if we just slow down long enough to listen mm -hmm. from, from deeper yeah. places in each other, what we find is, oh my goodness, like I want to, just take mm. off my shoes or bow in reverence for how beautiful God is at work in people's lives and how beautifully they reflect him. Mm -hmm. Because when I listen in spiritual direction, I'll tell you, I don't care who it is. Most people are out there doing the best they can and mm -hmm. to get to cheer them along as they live their life deeper with God and yeah. learning to love like he loves to me, is just one of the most grace filled inspiring things in my life. Mm. I don't leave yeah. the spiritual direction conversation without being inspired by how beautifully God is at work in people's lives. Yeah. It's such a grace. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what, what a gift to, like you say, to be just kind of the witness, the, the, you have that front exactly. row seat and just see it. And, and you're not, you're not a silent witness. You're, you're accompanying and you're, you're shaping mm -hmm. and, and molding and kind of almost in some ways, maybe even reflecting because sometimes people share what they say, but they don't see it from the outside. And so you get to be that reflection back to them of, of mm -hmm. the beauty of what's happening. Um, wow. That's, that's yeah, that, wonderful. The, 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 the Irish, whenever they would describe what spiritual direction is, they use a, a term called anamkara, which means soul friend. And, and that's mm. exactly what spiritual direction is. But all of us are probably, most of us who really walk and share life with others uh, mm -hmm. in spiritual conversation and companionship are practicing informal spir spiritual direction mm. without ever calling it spiritual direction. But a lot mm -hmm. of us are actually doing that, living and listening attention and presence with our friends and encouraging them along the way. Uh, mm -hmm. What, what I do is just a little more formal because we make sure we're meeting once a month for at least an hour to check right. in on what God's up to, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to shift gears a little bit here. So we, we, uh, we're talking about how uh, we have kids. Uh, they're about the same age. And so, I think when, when we met your kids, they, they were probably all four of our kids were in, in uh, elementary school, maybe. And, and so we yeah. kind of watched them off and on grow, grow up and a uh, few and, years and back. And you and Lena hit, hit, hit uh, empty nest right before we did. And so yeah. now we're empty nesters and we're like, Aaron and I are watching what you and Lena are doing and how you're <laughs> feeling. And y'all are yeah. kind of paving, blazing the trail for us as we learn from you. Yeah. Yeah. That's been a, that's been a new for a new stage and we can do you want to say more about that how that's been 
for you, uh, the, the transition. You're just six months into it, right? <laughs> yeah. Aaron <laughs> sent a picture to Kate and Caleb the day before yesterday and a picture of me, and I think I was crying in my soup. I was missing the kids so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, um, we're we're on the almost on the other side of that because next month Samuel's graduating, you know, and finishing college. So we're just like, oh my, now unbelievable. Now what? So yeah, um, but uh, yeah. I, so during junior high years, our kids for at least tw- a couple years they went to camps together. Uh, you know, like spring in the spring, or yeah, for missionary kids, or for um, mm-hmm. things like that. Um, but yeah, we as as our families have gotten together, it's been been fun watching them watching them grow up um so uh tell me tell me uh give me a your life story as you would tell it in maybe a few minutes okay so what's what's the story of james henderson from from today's perspective yeah so i was born in houston texas i have a twin brother um we were born in houston while my dad was at medical school and uh, mm-hmm. He, uh, he and mom lived in a renovated chicken shack. So okay. they came from humble uh, beginnings, uh, but I ended up living, you know, the majority, like 15 years of my life in uh, rural West Texas, a place called Childress. Mm-hmm. Um, and grew up, grew up in a very loving Christian home, you know, much like you did. And just mm-hmm. with parents that poured love and affirmation into my life, I couldn't have asked for better. A better, better parents. I have three brothers that I just love and admire. Um, they're just salt of the earth people. And mm. I, uh, well, so when when I graduated high school, uh, I was going to be a physical therapist because I liked working with sports teams. Okay. And but but my my youth minister, my my youth pastor said, "Hey, I think you might want to try out missions." Mm. And through an early childhood experience of going to Nigeria with my dad on a medical mission trip mm. over the summer. Um, I think there were seeds of, of cross-cultural missionary life that were planted in me early, early on by my family and their love for the world and caring about people. And so mm-hmm. well, my, my youth pastor picking up on that, he, he just said, Hey, you might want to try out this program mm-hmm. for young mission apprentices. And uh, mm-hmm. So I got into that and uh, came to Mexico City right out of high school. So I went from a yeah. small town, Texas, <laughs> 5,000 people to Mexico City, which is like teeming with what, 25, 30 million people. And it was just an adventure for my mm-hmm. soul. Uh, it, mm-hmm. it was during that time. There's this book out called um, The Defining Decade. It's a, a, but it, it, one of my friends was just now telling me about it, but that 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 decade, that those three, four, five years just were mm. so formative for me in Mexico City. I was, I had good mentoring in a downtown mission church that was just beautiful to me. Um, I fell in love with God. Mm. I started to practice the spiritual disciplines, which was leading me to friendship with God uh, in, in interactive relationship. I, I fell in love with Mexicans and they became my closest friends and taught me so much yeah. about what life of friendship and loyalty and joy is really like. And so mm-hmm. it wasn't hard for me to think, you know, I want to spend the rest of my life in, in Latin America. These are, these are mm-hmm. people who have adopted me, I think, and, yeah. and I get to love them back. So, th- so we, we've been doing mission work here. Uh, in Mexico for 21 years now as a family. So yeah, my life is just touched deeply by the grace of God through Mexicans. And uh, mm. just I, my, my family probably shaped me more as much as anybody. But then there was this deepening formation over these last 20, 25, 30 years of, of friends in Mexico. They, mm. their faith, their faith, has formed mine, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So I just have this deep love and respect for, 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 for people here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. I guess that's my Thank story you. in a nutshell. It's, yeah. Spiritual formation yeah. is a big part of that. Um, yeah. Mm. Uh, Nitty gritty soul work is a big part of that. Um, yeah. But that's, yeah. that's me in a nutshell. I've been married to Erin for 25 years and she's just mm-hmm. the, the, 
coolest person on the planet and I get to be married to her and live in closest friendship. And then our kids, Mm -hmm. Kate and Caleb are just the joy of our life. We love watching them live their life and cheer them on as they become Mm -hmm. who God dreamed for them to be. Yeah. Yeah, man. Well, that's great. That's great. And I, I, uh, so you and I both share that, uh, we have four, we're, we're one of four brothers, um, uh, all boys, no, no sisters. Um, yeah. So anyway, that's that's fun. But uh well that's that's great. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And um yeah, when I when I watch Mexicans and you interact with, with Mexican people, I mean I, I love how I mean most <laughs> there's there's this this sense of James he's a Mexican. This one is a Mexicano, you know. <laughs> I mean they they know you I I, I share the feeling because I, I not I have that part of me that's like, yeah, but I'm not fully a Mexican, you know, but but I fit in, you know, I belong, I'm accepted and, and yeah. um, people are, are so glad to, to just have, have us among them. So anyway, um, and, you know, I think the mm-hmm. I think the kingdom of God is ultimately about belonging and the fact yeah. that yeah. we get to live. We have the privilege of living our life mm-hmm. in a home that where we didn't grow up in, but that yeah. feels like home to us and where friends say ni casa is tu casa and they mean it with mm-hmm. deep trust and. I, yep. Just how lucky we are, you know, to get yeah. to live our lives with people that just are beautiful, you know, mm-hmm. whose values yep. are just have, have offered not just a gift to us, but a, a huge gift mm-hmm. to the world. You know, they mm-hmm. I just love getting to to live here. Something I want to I want to say about that I that I've appreciated about you is is I I feel I feel like one of the the giftings that you bring that I've seen in many contexts is, is your ability mm-hmm. to chew on big thoughts and big deep thoughts like um, you've read a lot you've you've been exposed to a lot of teaching yourself but you you make it digestible and communicate it clearly and so it, so I think the average person who's not so much a thinker, not so much a reader, not so much a student who, uh, of, 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 I guess, uh, more on the academic side of things, uh, you make, you make deep truths accessible to, to people. And I, I've just loved that. Like, in, mm-hmm. and I've seen it, uh, in different contexts and it's been, it's been a joy just like, okay, James is going to talk now. It's like, okay, this is, this is going to be good. <laughs> what, what, am, what <laughs> what's going to come Matthew. to come today, you know? And, um, and I feel like, for me, I mean, I can maybe prepare something, but I feel like, man, it's, to me, it's just, it's just work. I gotta, I gotta prepare. I gotta do, but it seems like it, for you, it seems na- a natural thing. It's a, it's a great gift. And I, and I like, I like how you're generous about it. So thank you for, for that gift that you give to us. Oh, thank yeah. you, Matthew. So. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you some some quick questions, and you just uh, give me a quick answer. You uh, and then yeah, you don't have to give a lot of explanation, just whatever you want to answer. Um, all right, all right. So it's gonna be fun. Your your favorite fruit? Uh, figs and mangoes. Can I say two? I love mango, but I also love figs. Awesome. Okay. In another life, I would be or I would do. Huh, another life. Um, I have so many interests, Matthew. Oh, my goodness. Um, I would want to be a Peace Corps worker. Okay. So dogs or cats? A, a, a fireman. A fireman. I want to be a fireman. I would want to be a rock star. Did you want to be a fireman when you were eight? <laughs> when you were a kid? <laughs> Didn't we all? Right, I did. I know I did. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, dogs or cats? Dogs, definitely. And probably a red Doberman named Rocky. I just love oh, yeah. dogs. <laughs> uh, what, what would you do with $10 million? Ooh, I hope that I would have the generosity to give a lot of it away uh, to very special and meaningful causes that that create good and grace in the world. Um, I would also think that I'd uh, want to help people start uh, whatever, it, like seed projects for their dreams. I would love to use the money that way. And I think I'd hope I'd okay. be responsible to save some of it. And Yeah. Yep. Good. 
Good, good. I don't think I so, ever want the responsibility of ha- of winning in a lottery or something like that. I, it, I, I think yeah. it could ru- it could ruin me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so sweet or salty? Both. Both. Uh, I, I love it. <laughs> mm. And even the it. mixture of those two things, sweet and salty. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, Put there's so nothing good. like putting some salt on on a papaya chopped up, huh? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love like the Mexican Mexican chili and tajin and and lime on there. Uh, mm. Just so good. Yeah, put me in a okay. bat of that, and I'll I'll eat my way out. <laughs> so, uh, what? Uh, who? Who's uh, a favorite? One of your favorite historical figures? Ignatius of Loyola. I love the way he lived his life and he's so much kind of like us. Like he's, his life was messy, but man, he learned how to pray while he lived a life of action with God in the world. Like he he took prayer seriously, uh, Mm -hmm. but it was prayer in the midst of everyday street level life and hospitals and universities and with the poor and very Mm -hmm. deeply inspiring his spirituality, just grounded, grounded in real life. A lot like Jesus, Mm -hmm. a lot like Jesus. Yeah. Okay. So coffee, tea, or other? Coffee. <laughs> yeah. So if you could interview someone, who would you like to interview? Rocky. Uh, Matthew, <laughs> Ma- Matthew Reed. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, can it be past, present? What, like, yeah, anybody? Yeah, it could be, it could be deceased even past, you know, time, times ago. Francis of Assisi would be an amazing, mm. an amazing interview. My my kids think that the saints are like Marvel characters, like the Avengers and stuff to me. Like I just uh-huh. love them. And I would, I think that it would be fascinating to mm-hmm. sit down with Francis of Assisi. Okay. Uh, yep. But I'm tempted to also say Dallas Willard. I, I'm tempted to say. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's a hard so, for me. I'd love to sit with a lot of these people. Yeah. Coke or Pepsi? Coke. Okay. What's a, a place that you want to visit? Um, I would love to visit uh, Peru and that take that long trail uh, that goes to Machu Picchu. I think that mm-hmm. would be an amazing fun time i want to go to the camino de santiago de compostela too i just want to walk that with my kids someday matthew those mm-hmm. are your stomping grounds over there in spain i would love to yeah, do that someday i'd be, i'd love to join you someday um all right let's let's go <laughs> beach or mountain um i i definitely enjoy both uh beach has a fond place in my heart because of the time we've spent there with our kids yeah I love yeah. mexican beaches love them yeah Yep. So here's another one. Uh, math. Is math blue or red? Oh, Matthew, math is black and white. We both know that. <laughs> it's, it's, all, it's all truth. There's no fuzzy gray areas. It's black and white. Okay. All right. Uh, do you have a, a favorite uh, series, Netflix or other? Oh, uh, certainly. Uh, Aaron and I are waiting to watch the, the next episode. Like, next episodes of the Chosen. A, a favorite movie. Uh, I, I love the Secret Life of Walter Mitty. I love Cinderella Man about the boxer from New York. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, those are. I love Ocean's Eleven mm-hmm. series. I love Moneyball. Yep. Okay, how about I a recent top, book? I gave you, I have gave you my top five, Matthew. You asked for one, and I'm giving you multiple. <laughs> yeah. You asked for one fruit, and I'm giving you two. <laughs> I asked for blue or red for math, and you gave me black and white. That's... I know. You, you asked what, what I do with it in a different life, and I said I'd be a fireman and a Peace Corps worker. Mm-hmm. I love it. So, uh, recent book you've read, or two, or three, or four. Oh, I'm reading right now. Uh, it's not even out yet. She gave me an advanced copy. Mimi Dixon's Worth Celebrating. Uh, it's a biography of a book, which is 
how the book celebration of disciplines by Richard Foster came out Mm -hmm. and it's just reconnected me to, uh, Mm. to, to reading celebration discipline for the first time, uh, Mm. when I was 18 years old, you know, which is a long, long time ago. And it's just, I really, I'm reading, um, the, a failure of nerve by, by Edwin Friedman about leadership that just has grit and keeps its eye on the ball, um, Mm. in deep connection in, self-differentiated leadership and, uh, mm. you know, stay, stay, staying connected and non-anxious presence is a really, really, really mm. good book. And, uh, I'm reading ocean of light by Martin Laird on contemplative prayer. Okay. Uh, and yeah, there's, those, are, those are the three right now. That's three, three that I'm reading. <laughs> okay. I read just a little bit at a time and try to soak uh-huh. in it. I'm not, yeah. I'm not speed reading anymore. I'm not trying to read as much as I can. I want to, I want to soak yep. in what's special. And mm-hmm. so I read, I'll read a few pages and put it down and I'll pick up, pick it up mm. again and read a few pages and really think about it. Mm. I'm reading differently yeah. than I used to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If you could uh, call someone and tell them you love them right now, who'd you call? Kate and Caleb. Yeah. And my mom. Right. I, 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 <laughs> I'll do it after we're done. That's nice. I'm a, uh, I'm a comma mom. <laughs> Aaron, Aaron yesterday texted the kids like Aaron, Caleb called us and, and it's, he called us cause he didn't want to study. And Aaron sent out a, a, a text <laughs> in our family chat. And she just said, um, y'all can call us anytime you want to avoid studying. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> we're, we're here. That's awesome. That's good. Well, that's, that's my questions. Um, um, so tell me what, what is something that I, that I have not asked you that you would like to share? Um, what I love about Matthew and Lena Reed. You want to share about that? Yeah. Um, I experience over and over again grace from you. I know that you're in the world to uh, to foster grace and forgiveness, and that is exactly how I experience you and Lena. You work so hard. You work so beautifully with people. You're so enculturated and incarnational, and um, I just love everything I see in y'all, you two, and in your family, and in the communities in which you live, from little kids in San Jose to, you know, serving people with your extraordinary talents and gifts, uh, but it, like crucible and cohort, and and walking with people right where you, in the streets of Tenancingo, um, y'all are an inspiring an extraordinary source of encouragement to me and Aaron and all of our friends all the time without exception. So mm. I am so great, grateful that God has put y'all in my life. Mm. Thank you, I, James. We are so blessed. Thank you. Yeah. I, I think, I mean, I, I can, I, I can say this, no doubt. I just trying to fight, find how to put it into words, but yeah, I think the gift of, of your life and my life has been huge and the words you've spoken to me, the encouragement you've been in the last decade, 15 years has, has just, just touched me deeply. And yeah, I'm, I'm just, I mean, I probably don't thank you enough. And I, I just, I, I'm, I'm just I'm so glad I get to do life uh, mm-hmm. parallel or close, close to, to you uh, Me too. So anyway, I, I I thank you. I thank you for that, and I'm just thankful for for the friendship we have. And um, I just it's it's the kind of thing I I I, I would wish for for anybody in the world to just say I, I just hope yeah. you have people like like James and people like you know in your life who are just just there for uh, good listeners, good have good words, and don't don't skimp on on just showering you with 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 love and words just like you did just now. So thank you. Um, well, uh, we need to wrap this up. So uh, I, I, I'm just glad that we, we had this time. I'm, um, uh, yeah, I, I look forward to the next, I don't know, 
decade, 15 years, 20 years of, of doing Let's life do or in, interacting. And so, Let's um, do it. yeah, there's no telling what will happen next, you know? Yeah. I can't, yeah. I can't wait for totally. whatever it is. Totally. Well, thank you, James. Love you. And hasta la próxima. Love you too. Thank you, Matthew, for your generous listening presence in this great podcast. I love your life in this autobiographical time with this podcast. It's so cool. God bless you. Thank you. Technical Ideas by Samuel Reed. Music by Javier Cervantes. Created by Matthew Reed. <laughs>